Have you ever heard of stones that hold the secret of ancient legends? Welcome to an adventure like no other as we uncover the mysteries of Apache Tears. On today's episode of Jason's Journeys, we're diving deep into the world of these enigmatic gems. Hello friends and welcome back to Jason's Journeys. Today's journey has brought us to Superior, Arizona. Apache Tears are fascinating volcanic rocks, known for their unique glassy appearance. But what exactly are they? Apache Tears are a type of obsidian, a volcanic glass formed when lava cools rapidly. Unlike other forms of obsidian, Apache Tears are often opaque and have a smooth, rounded surface, making them both intriguing and beautiful. You can find Apache tears scattered across the southwestern United States, particularly in areas with volcanic activity like Arizona, New Mexico, and Nevada. These stones are often found in the form of small rounded pebbles or chunks, just waiting to be discovered by those with a keen eye. Now you can see why they call them tears. Just little small. Okay, so now you can see them here. So this, all this rock here, you can see some in here. There's one here, all in here. Another one here, all throughout. There's some larger ones here sticking out, one here. So then to get those, we're just gonna take our rock hammer and pop those out. The trail is just speckled with obsidian. It's just like gravel. The black gravel is just Amazing how much is laying here in the pieces. If you look at this piece, you just pick it up like already all clean from the rain. You just pick it up. Look at that beautiful view. How amazing. amazing is this. So this is the perlite. So you can see this whole mountainside is perlite and embedded in here. You can see here's a chunk right there. 
put all the black specks, black specks in there. Those are all perlite. And I suspect those holes are from blasting. And you can see there's just carvings in the side of this mountain. It's just amazing. There's a couple other people here. I try not to get them on camera, but uh, come over here on our own. And you can see everything we got going on here. We'll go see what we can dig out. So let's dive into how these mesmerizing gems were formed. When volcanic lava erupts, it can cool so quickly that it doesn't have time to form crystals. Instead, it turns into obsidian. Apache tears form specifically when the lava cools in the open air and undergoes a process called devitrification, which gives them their characteristic appearance. So you can kind of see here what I'm getting out of here. Right there, I smacked the face of it. That's a nice big one too. However, Apache tears aren't just about geology. They carry a poignant legend. According to lore, these stones are the tears of Apache women who wept for their fallen warriors after a brutal battle. Their grief was so deep that their tears turned into these stones, forever holding the sorrow of their loss. So I did a little looking around and I found this spot right here. And you can see down low, there's some really nice nodules of, uh, look at all throughout here, there's some. There's some all through here, all through here, here. Down here, there's one. So you can see too, it looks like there was some bigger pieces that, that came out of here. Um, just where the little craters, here's one, here's one. There's a bunch of nice sized craters in here. So, and again, here's that brown band. Um, here, look at that, just sitting on the ground. Here's a really nice one. Um, oh, it's oh, it's a couple in there. Look at that. So you get this perlite out of there. There's a couple really nice pieces here. Apache tears are not just fascinating relics of our planet's volcanic past, but also touchstones of human emotion and history. Imagine holding a piece of this ancient narrative in your hands. Zero one. You see a nice little one there. It's not really a little, but medium size, one inch or so. Here comes the next one. This one's still encased in some of the perlite. Oh, I chipped it. Yep. So I chipped the face of it there. This one. So like I said, Seems to find some nice ones in these, near these brown veins. Um, I don't know if that really means anything or not. It's just a conclusion that I've come up with. Um, maybe professionals out there that do this know uh, if these brown veins mean anything. They do uh, throw a comment down in the comment section on what this brown vein is and what this means um, for finding these uh, Apache tears.
Here's the main tailings pile that I found as I was walking up. Like I said, I was gonna come and dig through that and you really don't even need to do much digging. Once you just get up here and you start seeing that there's tons of it just laying all over the ground here. Um, you just start picking it up, looking around. There's another chunk here. It's all over in here, tons of it. I'm curious now is to know what were they mining that they weren't really taking this obsidian. Or maybe they just didn't want anything small. They were after all the big stuff. But there's quite a bit of it here, just all over the ground. You don't even have to go into the caves chipping. You can just stay out here in the tailings. Here's a piece in there, some here. Come up here more on the top where the rain has started to wash it all away. There's a piece right here. There's another piece over here. Perlite. Just work your way down the side. Picking it up. It's all over. So you can make the trip out here. Um, I'll put the uh, the trailhead in the description on where you can park and uh, walk out. It is a public access trail. So you just park, walk the trail out. And you can see here, perlite right there on the ground. And there's some more right there inside of it. We can just pick it up though. So, no, no reason to get out the hammer and start chipping away. I see there's a bunch more up there. So really all along this trail, all up through here, all of this, you come out here and you'll be able to find these Apache Tears. Um, as they get down to the bottom, there's some bigger ones down here just laying on the ground. Rains have washed them down. But yeah, it's sitting everywhere. In a matter of, just in a matter of a couple brief minutes, a handful. But yeah, it's everywhere. And uh, take a look in the bucket here. I got some really nice pieces in there, quite a bit. And I haven't been here but a few hours. If you're curious to learn more about these intriguing gems and other hidden treasures from around the area, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on my next journey. Join me as I continue to explore the mysteries that lie beneath the surface in Arizona. Until next time, keep adventuring.